When you put on a meeting like this, it takes some work. I know. And I just want to say thank you. It's good to see everybody here tonight. The last family just saying that's my pastor's family. Amen. 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 I appreciate them, that's for sure. And uh, open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. That's right after 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter number 11. That looks like two ones standing inside each other. <laughs> yes, sir. That bit is helping me out. Thank you. Now, in seriousness, I'm asking God for direction. He's probably spoke to my heart about this direction at least three different times. So that being the case, then that implies to me that somebody here needs this. Amen. Amen. So in obedience to the Lord, this is the direction we're going tonight. I appreciate Pastor Hibner giving the liberty just to obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. So when you've found your place, if you can't enable, stand with me to honor God's absolutely perfect work. Yeah. Right. You know, the Bible is all-sufficient. Yep. You know what that means? That means it's all-sufficient. <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. Yep. Wow. It means that it contains everything we need for life and God. That's right. Amen. That's yes. a promise. Yep. Amen. All right, so here we are in chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians. We're going to jump in in verse number 23. Paul's obviously speaking to the church at Corinth. Last time I preached, I had the privilege to talk about how Paul prayed for the church there at Colossae. He's also concerned for the lay of the scenes. My intent was to carry on from there. So it is the Lord who has changed that direction to this direction. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths all. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among Paul's brother, hmm. in weariness. Painfulness and watchings often, and hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I'm not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory in the things which concern my infirmities. Let's pray right there. God, we are before you tonight. We sure need you. Lord, I pray if there's lost here that they get saved. Lord, I pray that you've already been at work in their heart to illumine their minds, to convince them of their need of a Savior, to convict them of their sin. Lord, that you might lead them to repentance tonight by faith that call on you to be born again. And for the saints, God, if somebody is discouraged tonight, I pray you'd encourage them. Yes. Yes. I pray you'd strengthen faith. I pray you'd confront sin that it might be confessed, repented of, forsaken. Lord, that they might get the victory you've already won for them. Mm. Pray for revival tonight. I'm certainly looking forward to Brother Thrift here for a while. Lord, I pray that you'd anoint him as well. We're a needy people. We need to hear from you. Yes. Would you grace us with thy presence for your glory in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. May be seated. Well, all this encouragement going on. Have a good week and everything. Making our preach on how to get depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Three easy steps, really. Step number one. Listen to the 10 o'clock morning news. Yeah, right. There you go. Right. Step number two, listen to the noon news. Yeah. 
<laughs> Step number three, <laughs> listen to 11 o'clock news when you go to bed. Yeah. Guaranteed yeah. to depress you every time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In fact, we had a wonderful time of prayer here this morning. Went downstairs and looked on the phone and you have these news clips and Pastor Thrift or Brother Thrift, me and just Thrift now, uh, we got talking and it's like mercy sakes. We haven't been out of the prayer closet 15 minutes and here comes the junk of the world again. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what. Now, I know that tonight, <laughs> this isn't going to apply to anybody here because none of us here ever get depressed. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know that we all have these big S's on our t shirts, you know, under our suits and ties. That's sarcasm, folks. You know, it's big. <laughs> so, this would be good information that you can get somebody else or maybe even help another person in another church. Uh, but tonight, God helping us, I want to deal with a couple of definitions. And a Bible example on how to handle depression. So as we go through this, ask yourself these questions. How am I handling disappointment? Mm -hmm. How do I handle discouragement? That's good. Come on. Yeah. How do I handle depression? Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, folks, life happens. Mm -hmm. yes. It happens even to the best of us. And everybody, everybody deals with disappointments from time to time. Amen. That's right. It's how we handle those disappointments makes all the difference. Yeah. Right. right. Even the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. The Lord's given me a two-point outline, and, uh, and then we'll be done. Doesn't mean we'll be short, just means we'll be done. So here it is. I'll give you the outline now in case I get busy and you miss it. Number one, definitions. Number two, Bible example. Hey. All right, so there we go. Number one is definitions. And uh, Pastor's real good at, when he preaches. He has all the letters lined up just right. Mm -hmm. If that ever happens in my message, it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So he was talking about that with his. He had all the C's going on the other day. But at least on point one, it worked out that way. So we're going to talk about the, uh, uh, the deadly, dangerous spiral that goes downward of the five deadly deeds. <laughs> well, anyway, that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I should have wrote it down the first time. <laughs> well, let's talk first off about definition. According to the dictionary, 1828, Little Webster, a disappointment is a defeat or failure of expectation. Mm -hmm. I thought that's a good way to explain it, isn't it? Yeah. A defeat or failure of what you're expecting to happen. Right. It goes on to say, a failure of expectation, hope, wish, desire, intention, a miscarriage of design or plan. Folks, have you ever had all your plans laid out just right? And you're pretty pumped about it. And you're yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. And then something happens. And it all goes down the drain. Oh, yeah. 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 Been there. You know what you call that? That's yeah. disappointment. Yeah. Yep. Right. It happens to everyone. It's called life. Yeah. Life happens to all of us. So we have a choice right here. You can deal with the disappointment the right way and bounce back fairly quick. Or you can focus on it. Well, if we're focusing on our disappointment, we're not focusing on the Lord. Right. You're right. right. So our focus is out of focus. And because right. of that, when I'm, when I'm focused on my disappointment, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> okay? All right. You all look at me like I'm the only one. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Come on, you're not alone. So this downward spiral, if we handle it the wrong way, focusing it on it, it gets too big. Right. Then that leads to the second D. See, the first one disappointment. The second one is this. You might get, ready, discouraged. Mm -hmm. yeah. So discouragement, according to the dictionary, is the act of disheartening mm -hmm. or depriving of courage mm -hmm. or the act of deterring or dissuading from an undertaking, mm -hmm. the act of depressing confidence. Mm -hmm. So when we get discouraged, it kind of knocks the wind out of ourselves. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It deprives us of courage. Discourage, lack of courage, no courage, okay? Yeah. So we're a little more hesitant, a little slower on the draw. Uh, we've lost some of the balance in our step. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. discouraged, yeah. okay? Uh, the second part says that which destroys or abates courage, that which depresses confidence or hope, 
that which deters or tends to deter from an undertaking. So see, it wow. has it stops you, but it sure has slows you down. Sure. Yeah. Why? Well, I'm a little discouraged now. Yeah. Why? Because of what I was expecting to happen went the wrong way, and it's kind of stole my thunder. And I'm focused on it now. I'm a little, I'm a little discouraged. That didn't stop me, but I'm just kind of mm, down. Yeah. By with me? No. So if you're disappointed and you focus and you go the wrong way, now you get discouraged. Right here is a fine line. That fine line is you're you're, you're just about ready to step across into sin. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I've got to qualify this. Because I also recognize there really is such a thing as a, a chemical imbalance. Sure. Okay? So if you're on medicine for what I'm about to talk about, don't stop taking your medicine. Right, right. right. God gives you some help for what we're about to talk about. Then go to your doctor and have him help you walk you down off from it. But don't cold turkey it. It's right. too dangerous. Right. Okay? But here's the thing. And, and I'm not calling it sin in every case. I'm saying the potential of crossing that line is next. So if I'm discouraged and I stay there long, I'm going down the spiral now right off into depression. Right. Okay. By definition, depression is the act of pressing down. Right. The state of being pressed down. A low estate. It goes on to say that it is a sinking of the spirits. It's dejection. A state of sadness. Watch this. A want of courage or animation. As depression of the mind. If I look here, here's where the battlefield is. Yeah. That's where it happens. Yeah. 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 Depression of the mind. Come on. Okay. Stay on. And if there is a want of courage, that means you don't have any courage. It's a lack of it. Come on. Come on. If there is a want of animation, animation is movement. If there's a want of movement, it has stopped you. Yeah. Yep. Okay? So depression stops you. It is a state of mind that has 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 you down. Yeah. It has you in a very dark place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depression is the ongoing self-centered gloom that a person allows himself to wallow in. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said it's potentially yeah. crossing the line of sin because anytime we are self focused, Amen. it never ends well. Yeah. Okay, so it's self focused, it's all about me. I'm so down, I can't seem to move. I can barely even get out of bed in the morning. It has stopped you in your tracks. Folks, this is a dangerous time. In this spiral, you cross the line as well into something I would consider critical. Yeah. Okay? Because when you're in this state and it's all about you, you go find yourself a corner and, and, and you yeah. and you're gonna have yourself a party. Yeah. It's called a pity party. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody's invited because you're not gonna mess it up because I wanna be sad. Yeah. Right. Come on. Yeah. Don't too, don't even try to help me. I'm going to yeah. sit over here and I'm going to get no boxes and try it out when it's, oh no. I want to find me a big old can of them juicy night crawlers. And yeah. I'll sit here by myself yeah. and pull them out. I'm going to have myself a pity party. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Amen. Yep. Folks, you're in a critical situation. And if you stay here real long, you've made yourself pray for the devil. That's You're right. right. Yeah. Come on. You're a candidate for his attack. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Careful. Here we go. But if you're depressed, you're ready to go back. You're going the wrong way. You're going to go down the spiral. Here's the next deal, okay? It's called delusion. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You slide from depression to delusion. Right. You went from critical to the ICU. Yep. 
Come on. This yeah. is serious. Yes, sir. Uh, it really is a thing. It is, brother. Yes, sir. The di dictionary says about delusion, the act of deluding. <laughs> it took you like when Webster does that, he uses the word in the definition. Anyway, he went on. Uh, the act of deception, a misleading of the mind. We are all liable to the delusions of artifice. Well, there's a fun word. Artifice. What is artifice? I don't know either. So I looked it up. So when I looked up the word artifice, I found out that it means, ready? A stratagem. <laughs> now we got it. I didn't know what that one meant either. But right now. Ready? <laughs> so anyway, that's called study. So it is a stratagem, an artful or ingenious device in a good or bad sense. In a bad sense, it corresponds with trick or fraud. That is an artifice. A stratagem is a military word. It is an artifice, particularly in war, a plan or scheme for deceiving an enemy, an artifice, a trick by which some advantage is intended to be obtained. Well, when we got back to the delusion, it was a misleading of the mind. To illustrate this, I brought along Joshua's little ball. I found it the other day. Hey, son, don't use it. So I took it. I don't know if you knew I took it, but I did. Here it is. <laughs> so if I take, put the ball in this hand, take it over here, and kind of give it a shake, do a little of this, it looks like it disappears. Mm -hmm. But really, it's in this hand. Because when you put it in this hand, take it over here, and I look over here, and I move over here, everybody looks over here. What is it? That's misleading. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now do a little theatrics, shake it around. The movement catches your eye. Yeah. Then you do a little showmanship and do this little finger thing, you know, whoop. Say, oh, it's in the other hand because you're caught on now, but that's a misleading. So when you look back over here, oh, it's not there, it's under my leg. Because when you weren't looking, I put it under my leg. <laughs> now, now, the illustration is, <laughs> now, the illustration is, if I can tease your mind, with a little rubber green bouncy ball. What do you think the devil can do who is a master right. illusion? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Good, brother. Right. Okay? Now, if you're saved, you cannot be possessed. That's right. right. That's right. If you're lost, you can be possessed. That's right. That's Not right. every lost person is possessed, but you have the potential. Yes. Right. If you're saved, the Holy Ghost of God comes in and dwells us and seals us. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not Amen. greater for Amen. him Amen. and the devil. Right. It's greater as he that is in us right. than he that is in the world. Yes. That's right. Right. Yeah. But friends, don't let that deceive you into thinking right. that it can't mess with your mind. Right. 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 This is yeah. where the battlefield is. Yeah. Come on. Stay with me. God help me. I'm trying to explain this, okay? Because uh, you want some scripture? Anybody ever heard of Ananias and Sapphira? Mm -hmm. The devil filled their heart to lie unto the Holy Ghost. That's right. Mm -hmm. yes, right. God gave Peter to the sermon on it, and he called him on it. Yep. Remember, they sold their farm. That's right. Put a little back for rainy day. Mm -hmm. So we sold it for this much. Because mm -hmm. why I say you filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Busted. Yep. And God killed him right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Time they got him married, his wife shows up. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Say, hey, did you do it for this much? Oh yeah! Mm -hmm. Boom! She's dead. That's yeah, right. You know, it's kind of it's not funny, so a little humor. This said that fear fell on the place. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, right. Because you know what I'd be thinking? Did I have a I land in the unfold? Oh, Lord, I'm sorry, but I, you know, you'd be thinking that, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. So even though they the devil messed with their mind. He filled their heart, the mind, the will, soul, okay, the heart, the soul, okay? He, he felt to lie. He can mess with the mind that came from him. The scripture was clear about that, but they're saved. They were saved and baptized members of that first church. Right? Right. You gotta be able to save the baptized to the members, okay? So, so they were, but the devil messed with their mind. But don't you notice something? God still held them accountable for their actions. Try it. Yeah, sure. Even though they based their actions on a lie or an encouragement to lie from the devil, 
they were still personally accountable for their actions. Yeah. Right. So whether we choose the sin of our own flesh or an idea the devil may have planted there, you and I are accountable for our own actions. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 Alright, so that's why I said we went from critical or, or uh, yes, from critical to the ICU because when you're delusional, your mind is susceptible Absolutely. for the artifice of the devil's strategy. Yeah. Right. And he's using that trick, the misleading of your mind, to cause you to base decisions on falsehoods right. yeah. so that God will judge you accordingly. Yep. Right. See, he lost 2,000 years ago. Right. When right. Jesus died on the cross, he was defeated right. for him. Right. And Christ sealed that defeat right. when he was right. resurrected three days later. Yeah. 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 Glory to yeah. 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 So the devil's lost his dominion, and he's lost his power. He's lost his authority. So all he has left is a stratagem, a plan to use an artifice. Some type of artful deception to get you to base decisions in your life on falsehood to get you in trouble with God. Uh, that's right. You're right. Yeah. I'm right. Okay. You're right. So when you're delusional, you're prey of the devil, you're susceptible to his delusion. A delusion is a false representation, an illusion. An error or mistake proceeding from false views. We have an enemy that is the devil. Yes, yeah. sir. He's a master at illusion, artifice, and strategy. Yep. And he makes situations, he can make situations seem so bad. Yeah. Right. That it's not worth living anymore. Right. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That thinking comes from false views. Yeah. A misleading of the mind. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It could be because life happened. Right. Focused on disappointments. Come on. Got discouraged. Wound up depressed. And slid off into delusion. Mm -hmm. It could be that the scripture is true about the wages of sin is death. Uh -huh. And that godly sorrow leads to repentance unto life. But worldly sorrow work of death. Folks, I've been with the sheriff department since 2002. I've worked so many death notices, I've, I've lost count. Many of those has been suicide. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I have a little bit of experience here in this matter. I will spare you the gory details that I've seen. I, I still like the picture I'm looking at it yesterday. Okay? Those kind of scenes never leave your mind. Yeah, right. okay? But it's very, very real. It's always sad. It's the hardest death notice to work. Sure. And it's extremely sad. And the absolute worst is when it involves a young person. Yeah. So if it happens to be a situation where I, I'm called out and we've found someone and now I have to go tell their family, Hello, Mrs. So-and-so, do you know so-and-so? Yes, that's my husband. Well, we found him tonight, and he's dead. Mm. Then, of course, the world begins to crumble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the first question? What happened? Mm -hmm. Yes, about every time. What happened? And then myself, or maybe the coroner's with me, or ever how the setting happens to be, and we would say, well, it appears to be that he took his own life. Can you guess the next question? Why? Mm -hmm. Folks, do you realize there aren't any answers to the why question? Nope. Yeah. One thing we know for sure, at that point in his life, he wasn't thinking straight. Right. Yes. He was under the delusion of the devil. Right. Yep. He had bought into one of his artifices. Yep. His strategy worked for the devil's advantage and he took his life based on false information about the worldly sorrow. There's been some folks that fell into sin or jumped into sin, and now they've been found out, and they're sorry they got caught and they can't handle the consequence, and that's what they do. I can name names, places, and locations in Hendricks County, that's how. Okay? 
I've seen situations where it just appeared that life happened and got the best of them. Okay? <laughs> this is serious stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I don't know the reason that God really oppressed my heart to the point where physically it sped it up. I'm not trying to get all, you know, Pentecostal or anything. I just really believe that. But there might be somebody here tonight in a very dark place. There might be somebody here tonight very, very, very low. And I'm begging you, please talk to somebody. Yeah. Amen. 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 Talk to myself, one of the other preachers here. To get help. Yeah. There is help. Yeah. Yeah. Please get help. Yeah. Come on. One of the lies of the devil is that there's no help, there's no hope. Do it. Right. But he's a liar from the beginning. Yeah. Right. Oh, there is hope. His name's Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So I messed up. There's none more ready to forgive than God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You may still have some consequences to face legally, but one thing for sure, your sin account's far worse yeah. than your physical consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And God's willing to forgive. Yes, sir. You're willing to humble yourself. Yeah. Right. Hey, listen, maybe life's got the best of you, and you've played right into the hand of the devil. I'm denying the word of God, hallelujah, showing you, hey, wait a minute, you don't have to go that way. I was preaching this out uh, out east, and, and after church, you know how people come by and shake their hand and stuff. Well, this uh, little 12-year-old came by, and she shook my hand, and I shook her hand, and, and I expected her to go on like everybody else, and she just stood there looking at me to the point where I got uncomfortable. Yeah. So I said, can I help you? And she said, you told me to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen you before in my life. I don't know what to do And the spirit of God goes, Phew. she said, you told me to talk to you. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, and I, what can I help you with? And praise God, I was able to get her daddy, and we got her some help. Amen. Now, I tell you what, I come in on a 12-year-old girl, girl have the courage Amen. That's right. to get help. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What I'm saying is there's help available. Yeah. 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 Right. Maybe it's I don't care if you're 12, 21, or 102. Yep. There's help available. Amen. Yep. Come on. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's go to number two in the outline. Or actually, from the next, from the illusion goes to destruction, and we just dealt with that. So there's that D. But nonetheless, the Bible example, back to our text. Turn back one page to chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Everybody there? Amen. Come on. Amen. This part should go fairly quick because the answer is pretty obvious here. Okay, so now I, Paul, myself, beseech you, it's begging us, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Time out. We have such a gentle Savior. Amen. Hallelujah to his glorious name. Amen. All right, time in. Who in the presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you? But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Time out. Verse 4 is the parenthesis. Yes, sir. If you take the parentheses out of the sentence, you can read the sentence, and the sentence should still make sense. That's what parentheses does, okay? But a parentheses is there for further information. So I want to remind you that when the Holy Spirit of God wrote the Word of God, He started somewhere on purpose. Yeah. He went somewhere on purpose, yeah. and He finished on purpose. Yeah. He never went, ah, I need one more verse. He never did that. Yeah. So if it's there, it's there on purpose, and now verse 4. He says, for our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I'm out again. Most of the men I know like carnal weapons. Yeah. yeah. If it goes bang, we like it. Some like 45, some like 357, some like nines. I mean, some like all. Well, you know, you get me? Right. But this isn't that kind of warfare. Right. 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 So, in fact, most of you probably have a carnal weapon with you. Yeah. I think you all should for the point of it. Yeah. But anyway, you get me sidetracked. I'm just saying, that's not this warfare. Right. Yeah. Right. So he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Folks, a stronghold is how the devil winds up in your soul or in your mind 
From ground you happen to surrender him, oftentimes through sin or depression or over.